Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today we'll look at the question of whether heaven will still have laws. Certainly, we have laws here on earth which, ideally, would be for the purpose of discouraging evil and protecting the innocent, and God's law is like that in some ways, while also serving as guidance to help us reach heaven. So, once you're already in heaven, wouldn't the law be unnecessary? Let's look at some New Testament verses that talk about the law of God. Do not think that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Matthew 5, 17. That seems to be as clear as a bell. The law of God will continue to exist, but for how long? For amen I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot, or one tittle shall not pass of the law, till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5, 18. Heaven and earth pass is a phrase that Jesus uses to describe the last day, the end of the world. However, this verse doesn't overtly say that the law will pass away after the final judgment. Still, both verses refer to fulfilling. So what does Jesus mean by fulfilling the law? The law that Jesus talked about fulfilling was the law of the Old Covenant, the law that God had given to the people of Israel through Moses. It was a law that involved specific customs for how to wash, what to eat, and a plethora of regulations governing animal sacrifices for sin and for other things. However, there were two problems with the old law. The first problem was, Did Moses not give you the law? And yet none of you keepeth the law. John 7.19 The people of Israel weren't doing their part by obeying the law that God had given them. However, even if they had, For it is impossible that with the blood of oxen and goats, sin should be taken away. Hebrews 10.4 the old law, if followed, could teach people to be sorry for their sins, but it couldn't wipe out those sins. Still, Jesus fulfills this law by giving his life to pay the debt for our sins, so while the law itself doesn't change, our relation to it does. We no longer look forward to the coming of the Messiah or make sacrifices for our sins, because Jesus already took care of that part. So what does this mean for the law in heaven? This refers to how the old law was imperfect due to its inability to actually reconcile men with God, and how Jesus fulfilled it by completing that work. As for the things about the law that may be changed at some point, Matthew 5.18 doesn't overtly say that at the end of the world the law will stop. However, there are some good reasons to think that it might cease being a factor for us as a set of rules. When people are made perfect, they don't need to worry about dying or avoiding temptation because perfect people can't die or be tempted. The people in heaven won't need to be preached to and won't have to worry about choosing the right path to follow because there is no wrong path in heaven. And this is the testament which I will make unto them after those days, saith the Lord. I will give my laws into their hearts, and on their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Hebrews 10, 16-17 When heaven and earth pass, the law is unlikely to have the same form because the just will be immortal, so the threat of killing, raping, etc. will be gone. However, we'll still know as much about the law of God as we need to know. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest of them. Hebrews eight eleven. Next, how much righteousness do we need? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.